we're going to determine if two functions are inverses of each other. First, let's look at the inverse function definition. Two functions, f and g, are inverses if and only if f of g of x equals x and g of f of x equals x. If and only if, also can be written as i of f, means that both of these have to be satisfied for the two functions to be inverses of each other. So let's look at these two functions and determine if they're inverses of each other. f of g of x equals x. Well, I like to write it as f bracket g of x bracket equals x, and I'll show you why. So f of g of x equals. Now what this means is in the function f of x, everywhere there's an x, I'm going to put g of x. Okay, that's a little confusing, but I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to write my f of x function, but I'm going to leave a big space where my x is. Because in that big space is where I'm going to put g of x. Now I need to simplify. So I'm going to simplify the inside here. Since I'm not multiplying anything into this parentheses, I don't need them. So I'm going to rewrite it. as x cubed plus 5 minus 5. Well, when I look at this, 5 minus 5 is actually 0. So I end up with the cube root of x to the third. Well, what happens here is the cube root and the cube cancel each other, which leaves me with an x. So my first one is satisfied. But remember, they both have to equal x for them to be inverses. So let's do g o f of x. Once again, I'm going to rewrite it. I just think it's easier to do it like this. You don't have to do it like this. So this means my function g of x, wherever there's an x, I'm going to put f of x in there. So I'm going to write g of x, my function. But what I'm going to do is put a big parentheses anywhere there's an x. See, instead of writing x to the third, I wrote blank to the third. Because remember, f of x is going to go on that blank spot, which is the cube root of x minus 5. Well, the cube root raised to a third power actually cancel each other. So what I end up with is x minus 5 plus 5. Um, negative 5 plus 5 is 0, which leaves me with an x. So g o f of x also equals x. So since they both equal x, I just proved that f of x and g of x are in fact inverses of each other.